Hi guys, as we go into another week, we can only guess what headache awaits Rishi Sunak and his government. His approval rating is through the floor, and none of his ideas to turn things around have worked. Now, we've been hearing lately about how some in the Conservative Party want Sunak out and somebody else in. The person at the top of the replacement list at the moment is Penny Mordaunt. Harry York, a reporter for the Sunday Times, spoke to Times Radio about her chances if she were to replace Sunak, but also repeats something of a conspiracy that I've talked about before, one that involves Suella Braveman or Kemi Badenoch. Some MPs are starting to think, well, maybe she is the only solution. Uh, maybe she can stem the bleeding. Well, uh, I, mean, I mean, mad as it seems, and I'm not going to pretend it doesn't seem mad, mm. I suppose there's a perfectly reasonable chance that she wouldn't do any worse than Rishi Sunak in the coming election, right? No, I think that is the, the conclusion of some MPs, mm. is how could we get worse than where we are currently. Yeah. Um, the the things I would say about Penny Morden is she does have large name recognition. And it, and it may seem a bit simple to say, but just the fact that she played such a prominent role in the King's coronation. Sure. Lots of people recognise her. And, and I think in Westminster, we try to convince ourselves that uh, everyone's paying attention to the ins and the daily ins and outs of policy making and announcements. The reality is most people, I don't think, pay that much attention, but mm. they do They do form initial reactions to people. They decide quite quickly whether they like them or dislike them. And I think Penny Morden, lots of the polling suggests she would be quite popular and she may actually be quite challenging for, for Starmer. She is mm. actually quite impressive in the House of Commons. Um, the flip side to that, of course, is that um, the public will probably think, how, are they, how on earth are we having yet another prime minister yeah. who we haven't elected free, bef- free before the, so since the last election. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the reality is that sh- she won't really be able to do much. I mean, there's no money left to spend because Jeremy Hunt's just spent it on uh, the latest instalment of tax cuts. And can anybody really turn around such a goal from the polls? I, I just don't think it's possible. Well, I mean, particularly if it would involve her, what, coming in in order to, to hold an election, which she would expect to lose... Yes. Albeit not as badly as Rishi Sunak would have lost, but still, so she still ends up with what five years as the leader of an opposition yeah. that doesn't know who it is, that is harried by reform, might not be such a great gig anyway. Yeah, and now there is a school of thought here actually about this story that's emerging about Tory right wing MPs because I there is a sneaking suspicion that I have that this story has been planted by not allies of. Penny Morden, actually, but allies of Suella Bravman and potentially even <laughs> Kemi Badenoch. Now, this is all very com- conspiracy theory and complex, yep. but mm-hmm. the idea being that you put a moderate like Penny Morden in for a short period, okay, and she mm-hmm. takes the party into the election. They then lose still, but those people still keep their seats because they're not losing 300, 200 seats. Now Penny, and, now Penny Morden's out the way. Then Penny Morden's out the way. They yep. tried the moderate, the moderates failed, and then the doors open for somebody on the right to take over. Oh, it'd be nice if they all just gave this much thought and planning to actually running the country, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Can you imagine if they put as much effort into actually improving people's lives as they are in regards to these shenanigans, these Machiavellian games? Now, a few things to talk about here, and I I have to put my tinfoil hat on here because I buy into this conspiracy theory that I think that Suella Braverman, maybe Cammy Badenoch, and maybe not them directly, but at least their supporters, their backers within the Conservative Party, would like to see Rishi Sunak or Penny Mordaunt, one of the moderates, crash and burn. And it is ironic that we're describing people like Rishi Sunak and Penny Mordaunt as moderates. It just shows how far the Conservative Party have moved to the right over the last number of years. But this is this would make sense in their plan. What, what happens is the Conservative Party crashes and burns, loses a load, of, a load of seats. The people who still remain are to the far right um, of the Conservative Party, like Suella Braveman, um, Kemi Baddock. It looks like they will hold on to their seats. So those people remain in Parliament and they're able to turn around and say, see, if you had actually put a real Conservative in charge, we would have won the election. And we've already heard that sort of language already from other people also in the within the conservative party but also outside nigel farage has said that uh, the conservatives have abandoned the traditions of the conservative party um david frost the the former brexit negotiator he was involved in a poll that resulted in uh perhaps 
up to 90 seats being lost directly because of uh, Reform UK. Now, of course, there was a lot of manipulation within the polling of that, but it does point to a situation which is pretty dire. And, of course, the Conservatives going into the general election, uh, those on the right would like to blame somebody. They're not going to point the finger at themselves. They have to point the finger at someone else. And Rishi Sunak, Penny Mordaunt would be an easy scapegoat. Now, back to the other point that he was he was talking about with Penny Mordaunt as a replacement for Rishi Sunak. Would she actually help the Conservative Party? I've said before that whoever replaces Sunak would probably get a short-term boost. Might see the polls move a little bit in in a favourable direction for the Conservatives. But I think later on that would sort of die down because the public would maybe feel a bit of enthusiasm for the for the new prime minister maybe it's, oh there's a bit of a change maybe things are going to um move in our favor maybe something will something will come out of this something will help ordinary people but then after a few weeks they'll realize that no that's not the case and where you know there's been a change of hats basically there is no real change going to take place because we're stuck with the same people and i keep saying the election will not be about whether Keir Starmer would be a better Prime Minister or Rishi Sunak or, or Penny Mordaunt or whoever, it will, it will come down to the cost of living crisis and whether people want more of the Tories. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.